And then, and then, (laughs) yesterday, at a so-called Fox News town hall, the orange bastard said that, well, yeah, I probably would be a dictator, but only for one day. Ah, only one day I'll be a dictator, one day. He was asked by the little shit, well, he's not so little anymore, he's really bloated up, had he? Sean Hannity. Hannity pressed Trump, so to speak, on two occasions during this event in Davenport, Iowa, on whether he, Trump, would promise not to abuse his power when he returns to the White House. And in answering both of those probes by Sean Hannity, Trump, you know, like Trump always does, he kind of circumvented the question and didn't outright deny the possibility. This is what the little shit Hannity, well, he's not so little anymore. Hannity said, he asked Trump during... uh the second exchange, uh, Hannity said, under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. And the orange bastard quickly replied, except for day one. <laughs> and the crazy little fuckers in the audience, you could hear people applauding and going, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, get them liberal son bitches, get a couple Jews too. And some Muslims and queers. Hey, yeah. Oh. And then Trump looked at the camera. The orange bastard is losing his fucking mind. He looked at the camera and referencing Hannity. The orange bastard said, he's going crazy. And then poor little Sean. Well, he's not so little anymore. He said, except for day one, meaning And then the orange bastard said, as the crowd cheered, quote, I want to close the border and I want to drill, drill, drill. And then Hannity, the little shit, although he's not so little anymore, he had to, you know, make sure that his lord and master didn't misunderstand. And Hannity said, well, that's not retribution. And then Trump turned to the audience again and he said, referencing Little Sean, he's not so little anymore. Trump said, we love this guy. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? And I say, no, no. Other than day one, (laughs) that's a real knee slapper, isn't it? Huh? (laughs) God damn. What the fuck is going on? And the orange bastard added that on his first day in office, he will have total disregard for any kind of constitutional law. And in that promise, he is going to close the U.S.-Mexico border and expand oil drilling and all kinds of shit, destroy the FBI, close the Department of Justice, blow up uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, eviscerate the Education Department. Maybe in the Education Department, he'll put put this crazy bitch who formed uh, Moms for Liberty, the one who uh, uh, wanted to climb on a woman and her husband and have lots of sexual fun while she insisted that little children shouldn't read about queers this, the, the, well, now that little exchange between the orange bastard and little Sean, although he's not so little anymore, that was prefaced by Sean telling Trump that the media, <laughs> the media was, Shawnee's word, attacking him for his authoritarian rhetoric and tendencies. Uh, Really, Sean? You think the media are attacking him? Oh, well, we need to put a stop to that shit, right? Uh, Yeah. And then later yesterday, the Biden campaign responded to uh, the orange bastard's dictator remarks by posting a video of the exchange online And 
The Biden campaign manager, Julie Chavez Rodriguez, said in a statement, quote, Donald Trump has been telling us exactly what he will do if he's reelected. And tonight he said he will be a dictator on day one. Americans should believe him, end quote. Yeah, and and you don't need to listen to an obvious Democrat like uh, Julie Rodriguez. Listen to a very obvious conservative Republican like Liz Cheney, who has been all over, thank God, been all over CNN, MSNBC. Um, I, I, I doubt if she's been on Fox. I don't know. I never watched the Fox sewer because I don't want my brain to be sucked out of my eyeballs and absorbed by the television screen, which will happen. Um, but Liz Cheney, who is a, a, a Republican conservative sine qua non, I mean, she is at the top of the heap of Republican conservatives. And I just wish sometimes I, I could send her some kind of a text or an email or something that she would read that said, Miss Cheney, please understand you're sitting on the top of a pile of rotting maggot infested corpses. You know, your Republican Party, Liz, I'm sorry, Miss Cheney doesn't exist anymore. It's become the Christian fascist party. But I also want to tell her how much I appreciate what she's doing in the book she wrote. And as uh, um, in the interview the other night on MSNBC with, uh, oh, what's her name? When it was made clear that Liz Cheney is an absolute lock, stock, and barrel conservative in the model of her old man, the war criminal Dick Cheney. But for this brief moment, uh, Liz Cheney is more interested in trying to be an instru- uh, instrument of salvation for this country, which is what we should all be doing. Uh, going back to this uh, bullshit interview on the Fox sewer with little Sean Han- well, he's not so little anymore, Hannity feeding straight lines to uh, the orange bastard, which is what Hannity has, he's devoted his life to his Lord and Savior, um, Donald Trump, Donald Jesus Trump, excuse me. And Hannity will, you know, prostitute himself to whatever degree necessary to remain in favor. I mean, after all, look, Sean Hannity, man, his best buddy is the uh, El Presidente. Ah, ah, ah. Um, but uh, earlier in that town hall, so-called, uh, Sean asked Trump to clearly say, if he, quote, do you have any plans whatsoever if a reelected president to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? And the orange bastard replied, you mean like they're using right now? <laughs> and that was the cue for the orange thug to begin complaining about the indictments and criminal charges he faces. And, of course, as always, he calls them all made up. Uh, the orange bastard added this, I, I guess, in attempt to be uh, uh, cute. He said, quote, I often say Al Capone, he was one of the greatest of all time, if you like criminals, and he got indicted once. I got indicted four times, end quote. Well, Donnie, you stupid son of a bitch. That's because the only way the government could get old Al Capone was tax evasion. And I'm sure your day is coming on that, too. Uh, now, the orange bastard has made it very clear, and um, tomorrow, which is Thursday, I will be running to my local bookstore to, uh, um, to pick up Liz Cheney's new book. Absolutely. But on several occasions, uh, he has suggested that he would use the White House to target his adversaries, as we all know. And as Liz Cheney has pointed out repeatedly, and 
in June, for example, after he was arraigned in Florida, <laughs> the orange bastard said that when he gets elected next year, he's going to, quote, appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family, end quote. The most corrupt president in the history of the United States, Biden? <laughs> well, in Trump's worm-rotted brain, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Hey, you notice I don't have a sponsor tonight. Hint, hint. <laughs> Come on, folks, don't leave me hanging. I'm starting to get nervous. I really am, um, which means I have to take another sip of River Moon coffee. The only thing that uh, really neutralizes uh, anxiety, whether it is um, flashbacks of some sort or flash forwards of some sort. You know, I'm more worried about the flash forwards right now, really. Um, now, another Republican, uh, the, these Christian fascist devils are just, they have so fucked up this country and continue to do it. What's coming up? The impeachment um, is planned, a vote uh, of impeachment inquiry is planned for next week. And in the meantime, this the dumbest son of a bitch in the United States Senate, the dumbest son of a bitch, you know who I mean. He's from Alabama, and it's Tommy Tuberville, <laughs> a former football coach. <laughs> hey. In a single stroke yesterday, the Senate approved over 400 mili- military promotions that uh, Tommy Tuberville of Alabama had been holding up for almost a year, this son of a bitch. I, I mean, this is what the Christian fascists do. Now, we can make a strong argument against U.S. militarism. I have made that argument numerable times. But that is in some fictional future world right now. With the whole goddamn world dissolving into fascism, well, I reckon we better have a military that is more than willing to kill the fuck out of people if it becomes necessary, right? Oh, what a horrible thing to contemplate. But that's where we are, isn't it? And I hate it, and you hate it, and we can hate it until hell freezes over. It's not going to change things. I don't know if there's anything that will change things where it concerns the militarism and the necessity of militarism by the United States. I I, I don't know. It it doesn't look very promising, does it? But Tommy Tuberville of Alabama had been under pressure from members of both sides of the political aisle to end his hold on advancements in the military because, you know, senators complained that Tommy Tuberville's action was causing all kinds of distress to service members and their families and on military readiness. If we're going to be a military power, which, if anything, the United States has always been that, at least in the past 125 years, we are the bull in the china shop, and by goddamn, we will prove it. If the occasion arises. Um, And we will also defend capitalism down to the last man. If the occasion arises like World War Two or, well, even World War One, although we chicken shit it out of that for a long time until it was practically won by Europe. But I digress. So if we want to be. And apparently we have to be the most powerful military force in the history of the human race. Then we can't have trolls like Tommy Tuberville of Alabama putting a hold on everything because, you know, those goddamn women are, you know, they get knocked up and then they want to run and kill the baby. We're not going to have that. Jesus Christ. Chuck Schumer. 
Senate Majority Leader said, quote, thank God these military officers will now get the promotion they so rightfully earned, end quote. And that action by the Senate, it, it took them, what, 30 seconds, boom, boom. Those in favor, aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. It was that quick. And that came just a couple hours after Tommy Tuberville of Alabama said, I'm not going to hold the promotion of these people any longer. <laughs> I will uh, continue to hold about 11 of, of the three stars because, uh, you know, I'm still going to fuck with the military. I'm still going to prove that I want to see this country have the shit beat out of it so we Christians can rise to power or some such shit. God, these people make me sick. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me... Mike Malloy can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.